We've talked a lot about the importance of backing up your data locally in addition to online solutions like iCloud, Dropbox, and Google Drive. Today, I'm going to show all of you at home how to format any external hard drive so that you can use it to back up your Mac and also answer a lot of the common questions that my clients have had about this process as we're going through it. That's coming up next on TechTalkAmerica.com. I want to start with the most common question I tend to hear about this topic, which is what should I buy? Technically speaking, any hard drive will work with a Mac, so there really is never ever a need to pay extra money just for a hard drive that's pre-formatted. That just means that you're lazy and you spent more money than you actually needed to. That being said, I do have to say after doing years of this stuff that you know there are certain brands out there that tend to work better than others. Um, so for example, in the past I've recommended Western Digital as well as Seagate. These days, I'm really just recommending Seagate. I love the folks at Western Digital, but they're including a lot of software with their drives that doesn't really help Mac users and can be very, very difficult to remove. So anyways, Seagate, you get my little seal of approval. I'm sure you are absolutely just thrilled about that. So uh, let's go on to the next question that I tend to get a lot of, which is, can I use a drive that I already own? Um, Yes, absolutely. I want to make very clear, in the process of formatting a drive for Mac, you are going to wipe all of the data off of it. I just like to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, the drives that I'm recommending below, by the way, they are all USB 3.0 drives. Why? Because it's faster than 2.0, and frankly, it's a much less expensive alternative to Thunderbolt. If you got the money, go with Thunderbolt, but it does come with a cost, typically. Now, if you do not have a backup, those links down below. But I also want to talk about a different level of backing up your data. This is for those of you out there who are power users like me. Um, so there's a special kind of device. I've only sold it to typically wedding photographers, videographers, film editors, those kind of folks who have big, big data. And I want to show you, I actually have mine. So this puppy is not as uh, inexpensive as the other drives. This is called the Drobo. They make different models of this. This right here is the Drobo Mini. And the, what makes this special is this doesn't have one drive. That has four drives. So basically you can put in whatever drives you want. It will massage the data throughout all of them so that when one of those drives fails, as they all do, you don't lose your data. And actually this saved my butt uh, last week because this drive right here just failed. So what happens is the drive, there's a little light behind it, it turns red, you pop it out just like that, pop in a new drive, it rebuilds on its own, very easy, no data loss, absolutely, in my opinion, worth the money for those of you who are in business or heavy data. So Drobo Mini, we're going to be talking more about Drobo down the road uh, in a future video, but I want to at least mention it. If you are looking for this, uh, they have some weird things where they'll send it to you with drives. You'll save money if you buy them on your own. So for those of you who are interested in this kind of a solution, I'm going to pre put together a package for you that will save you more money. Uh, that'll be also of course in the description of the video. So let me put that little puppy away. Next question. Um, I tend to get a lot of this uh, from people. Can I put data um, on the backup drive in addition to the backup? Okay. Technically speaking, of course you can. What I'd like to remind you though is that anytime you have data that is in one location only, it is one location from gone. So you might want to rethink that. Um, you might want to consider putting it a backup of it on a flash drive, put it in a safe, get a second hard drive, whatever, just so that there's more than one copy. So let's go over how to format. Let's get to the actual topic here. How about that? The way you're going to do this is go to the spotlight icon that you see here at the top right corner and click on it. And you're going to type in the words disk utility. It should pop up in the little uh, menu that pops up. Double click on disk utility and you're going to see the drive that you've plugged in by now uh, listed there. If you should see a drive that is slightly indented, you don't want that one. You want the main drive and obviously don't click on your hard, your Mac hard drive we're dealing with the external one. From here, what you're gonna do is you're going to uh, click on it so that it's highlighted, go over to erase, and now you can name the drive whatever you want, feel free to get creative. You're gonna set it to GUID partition map, set it to Mac OS journaled, 
and when you're done, hit apply. It'll take about 30 seconds or so to uh, do the whole process, and when it's done, you should see it show up here on your desktop. If you do not, it's probably because your finder preferences just need to be altered. I'm gonna take two seconds and show you how to do that just because I don't feel like answering it a million times in the comment section. So, what you're gonna do from here, if you want your external drive to pop up, click on the desktop so that it says the word finder at the top left corner. Click on it, go to preferences, and here under the general tab, you will see there's a little checkbox next to external disks. Make sure, it's, make sure it is checked. You are good to go. So now we can hook this puppy up to Time Machine. The way to do that, if you don't know, go to the Apple icon, top left corner of your screen, go down to System Preferences, and in the window that pops up, you're gonna go down to Time Machine towards the bottom right, and you're going to turn it on. Um, now, depending on what operating system you have, this might look ever so slightly different. Um, in this case, you can tell it's on because on is green. Some people have trouble seeing which way it is. I don't know. Anyways, you're gonna now click on Select Disk and choose the drive that you have just named, and it's gonna start the process. So basically, that's the way it works. The, after you're done with that initial first backup, at that point what it's gonna do is it's only gonna back up once an hour if there are changes, if it's plugged in. On that, I wanna mention something. Some people find this process a bit annoying, especially those of people who are on iMacs and it's always connected to the computer, whereas laptop owners, it tends to be disconnected a good chunk of the time. If you would like to alter when your computer backs up to Time Machine, we have created a second video for you. It's a free piece of software that modifies Time Machine's schedule. If you wanna check that out, you can click, I'm gonna go with right around here. There'll be a little box right there. Um, if you like this video, hit that little thumbs up, like button, show us some digital love. We'll see you next time. Leave us a comment too, by the way. Uh, this is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.